is some very blue water. That somebody got mugged at gunpoint at this anchorage. But we're going anyway. Okay. I need more drinks if you're going to be talking like that. <laughs> hey, everybody. We're back. So uh, I guess first off, we should say we're kind of reducing things down now to uh, every other week, if you haven't already noticed, uh, every other week videos. Um, this is mainly because uh, we kind of have to work uh, a 40 hour week now uh, to, to continue to afford this. So um, it slows us down. Uh, there are sunny days like today when we are going to be at the beach. When you're watching this, we're probably at the beach. Uh, and there are sunny days like yesterday where we did 10 hours at our desks. Yeah. Don't worry, you guys are still going to see all the good stuff, but nobody wants to see us sitting at the How much table good working. stuff are they going to see? <laughs> You'll see all the good stuff. Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I need more drinks if you're going to be talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, really? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first off, uh, a special shout out, mega thanks to all of these wonderful people right here. Uh, they, they help keep the dream alive. They are uh, uh, really uh, stepping forward and, and supporting us in a direct way. Uh, we love each and every one of them. Um, good advice too. We communicate with several of them and, and uh, regularly. It's very nice. Um, we also love you guys. Uh, you know, uh, all the, the comments, all the likes and subscribes. Uh, if, if you want to help out just a little bit, hit that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell. It's free to you. It also really helps us out. Uh, when we last left you, we had just arrived at West End in the Bahamas after uh, a harrowing sail. We were actually in the Bahamas. We got in last night about 10 o'clock after 28 and a half hours. Yes, a trip that was supposed to take, I think, 10 hours maybe straight across to Bimini. 28 and a half hours and twice as long as... Twice as many nautical miles as it was supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. We have that mad skill where we did 47 miles. We did it in like 93 miles. <laughs> there may be some people out there, there are some people out there I know, that can just skim gracefully right across the Gulf Stream and have no problems. And that's not us. I think we were, we were headed towards Bermuda. So... Uh, I've already been upstairs and, and seen out here, but Misha's coming up for the first time to see it in the daylight. You have no idea how clear that water is. We're in 23 feet of water right now. I can see ripples in the sand. Wow, look at that. Oh my goodness. That's so crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Right. I think that's our anchor chain. I think you're right. I was wondering what that was. We're in 23 feet of water and you can see our anchor, anchor chain. Anchor chain all the way to the bottom. Yeah, I can see it all the way out there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, that's amazing. I'm ready to do some diving. So we are at the anchorage west end of west end. Uh, this is west end of the Bahamas and this is the West End West End Anchorage. Somebody's house? Possibly? I think the government building's over there somewhere. Oh, okay, okay. Shops and stores. We don't know what to do in West End. It's a good thing we hit West End or yeah, next stop Bermuda. <laughs> so I'm glad we made it. So last night when we got in, we were exhausted, obviously, but uh, and we had been eating granola bars and uh, I think we had a little stir fry, leftover stir fry during the trip, but for the most part, trail mix, nuts, granola bars, breakfast bars, that kind of stuff. Easy to make, easy to eat, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
We haven't been eating great the last couple of days. Uh, yeah, so uh, last night we got in, we just made some quick soup and threw it on some Fritos, which is one of our go-to fast meals. Uh, so nice to have a hot meal. I know oh, it's, yeah. I mean, it, we were hot, we were sweaty. Yeah. Uh, I think my shirt was able to walk by itself, but... Uh, <laughs> and then we went straight to bed, right? There was no celebration, there was no elation. This morning, I need to take down the dinghy, put the motor on the dinghy, then I need to grab our documentation. Dinghy over to there, check in, so we can take down the quarantine flag. And then we will uh, be released into the Bahamas. We called the Immigration and Customs Office there in West End to prepare to dinghy in and they said you cannot dinghy in to West End to check in. They want to see your boat. Uh, so we were going to have to take Flo into the marina there. All right, well, uh, we, we need to go into the marina to check in. So I'm gonna call the marina and uh, make sure they have space for us and tell them we are inbound. Hold by marina, this is SV Flo on 16. Obama Bay, come on. Obama Bay, SV Flow would like to come into your seawall to check in for customs. Check in and leave in. Affirmative, we are uh, in the West End Anchorage right now. Just come in to check in and then leave. Roger, you can come on and pull up alongside the starboard wall. Good copy, thank you. Okay, I guess we are going in. So let's, uh, I'm gonna throw on some socks and shoes and then we'll need to uh, fire up the engine, pull up the anchor, and roll. Go straight into that turning basin. But don't cut that corner too close. All right, so this is a real narrow cut coming into the west end. And there's a lot of current blowing that way. So Misha had to crab the boat in and then snap straight at the last second. It's a little unnerving. And then we've got around this corner uh, of course, the wind is trying to blow it that way. So yes, yeah, so you can see the big turning basin in the background. We're going to go all the way into that. Don't get too close to that corner. It's another reason these headsets are so handy, because I can be out here on the bow of the boat talking my helmsman through everything. Yeah, straighten up on the far left-hand building. And then let the boat kind of drift to the left so that we can swing that corner wide because we need to come in on the inside of that wall down there. The, the way you're pointed is exactly how we want to be pointed. That way we'll have time to make our turn and slow down into the wind and then just kind of hug up against the wall. All right, you can start your turn now. You can see, right? Okay, now you are let's do slip. That's uh nine. Zero nine. Bring up bike to me, man. Starting to stop as I die. Okay, you guys want to see just one check in the beaver? We're checked in. Yeah. Well, we uh, we got stamped passports. We got stamped certificates. We are oh we are good gosh. to go. I'm gonna throw the trash in that trash can, and then we will oh, yay. Uh, head back out. Awesome. Let me um, gather up any trash that I can find before we. Uh, <laughs> okay. Before Hand we me that bag right there. Okay. Woohoo! All right. Well. Don't put your foot through that hatch. This makes it. Official. Is it oriented the right way? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, I'm not sure how it's supposed to be oriented. So I could have said anything. Yeah, yeah, I was just making sure that you knew because. 
and we're now flying the Bahama flag. Woohoo! Oh man, let it begin. So I actually wish I had a more prepared statement. But you and I have been working on this for 18 months. So three attempts this year, one attempt last year. And we are finally, officially, in the Bahamas. <laughs> oh, man. Whiskey never tasted so good. Woohoo! <laughs> For love of wind! <laughs> So the west end of West End Anchorage is really good protection from a north blow or an east blow. Right now we're getting a south blow and man, it just, it was a rough night. Uh, we came out of the, the uh, marina yesterday after clearing customs. We should have just gone all the way around to a different anchorage, but we were so excited. Uh, we stopped here, the winds weren't bad. The winds are now bad, so uh, we're going to spend a couple of hours and we're just going to relocate to a much more protected anchorage. Um, the top review on this anchorage is that somebody got mugged at gunpoint at this anchorage, but we're going anyway. Well, um, there were two other boats out here in this anchorage with us yesterday, and uh, by daylight this morning they had both pulled anchor and left. Um, it was, uh, we didn't get much sleep last night to say the least. So I'm ready to go to a calmer anchorage. Um, we're going to, we're going to go check it out. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's this morning. We're doing it before breakfast. That's how desperate we are. So fully reefed in 20 knot winds, broadside. Nisha's trying to hold a heading. We really only wanted to move three miles today because the winds were blowing and we were in a bad anchorage. And that has turned out to be quite the adventure. Nisha's laughing. I don't want to interview her because she's concentrating so hard. You just keep concentrating, my love. Yeah, I gotta watch the compass. Even if I look up, I lose my heading. And I'm really having a fight to hold my heading right now. It hates my eyes. Home stretch. Although I am a little bit nervous because um, in this cut. Make your turn now. Start. Turn to port. Okay. Hard over. Hard, Hard over. Okay. See the cut? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. It is wider than I thought it would be. Yeah, there we you go. Have, um, All right. Straighten it out. Straight. You're going to have to crab in because of the winds and the swell. There you go. Hold this heading here. Okay. Do you have um, Navionics up so you can see where the coral reef is? Yep, yep, I do. As soon as Misha gets past this rock barrier, I'm going to drop the main and we should be in calm waters. Actually, a pretty decent looking beach over there we might have to check out. We're almost behind the rock wall. You're almost protected. Okay, guys, I'm gonna drop the main. I think we made it. So, boat pull it is. But it should be really easy now. You don't have to watch the compass, just steer. Yay! Oh my goodness, I feel so much better. All right. See how flat that is now? Yes. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the that the worst part was yet to come. I thought we'd have a really hard time coming into the cut because we had to turn broadside to the swell and the winds and the waves were just terrible and I was having a really hard time keeping a heading. But um, no, once we uh, put the sails up, it kind of smoothed out a little bit and, and actually coming into the cut was very, very easy. Thankfully, Cade um, is a really, really good navigator and he was my eyes this whole time because I had to watch the compass um, but coming into the cut was super easy it's plenty wide enough I know a lot of the reviews said it was really narrow but at least for our size boat uh, 45 feet it, it's plenty comfortable yeah the reviews on Navionics the first review you come to literally is uh, one star pulled in here got mugged at gunpoint but that's from several years ago. There have been many reviews since, and um, those reviews are positive. I've seen videos of people coming in here, so I really hope everybody considers this the anchorage to be in, in uh, West End of the Bahamas. It's gorgeous, super flat. I mean, there's a whole bunch of areas we wanna go explore. Look at this. We're anchored, bridle is set. Water's not nearly as clear here, but uh, it's very protected. No current, no swell. All we have is a little bit of wind and that won't be a problem for us at all. So I put out about 80 feet, uh, about, ni about 90 feet of chain. It took us about, what, three hours? To get three <laughs> miles. To get three miles. <laughs> this is flow after all um to a new anchorage which uh has had some bad reviews or it actually has, it has it's got it's got good reviews but the primary review which i i guess i can understand from a, a safety standpoint that's probably the most um important and relevant review but it was from a few years ago where somebody uh had been mugged at gunpoint by a local fisherman there. Uh, and of course, when we were looking, when we were originally scouting out anchorages uh, in West End, we saw that and we saw that review and we thought, okay, we'll forget that. We're not going to stay there. Um, but it actually ended up being super well protected. Um, it was very welcome for us after coming in, um, in the, you know, with all the waves and the swell and the weather and, and uh, it was super calm and a very nice place to stay. It was very quiet. Uh, it was very nice and very calm, and we were there for... Um, One night, no, two nights, two nights. <laughs> two nights, yeah, not, not very long. So that, that's part of the problem, right? So we, West End is Northern Bahamas, and Northern Bahamas, uh, which is also very close to the US, uh, at this time of year gets a parade of cold fronts coming across it. Uh, we got into this anchorage. We wanted to go to the beach the next day. The next day we wake up, it's it's in the 60s, uh, which I know for a lot of you, that's not cold. But when you want to go to the beach and it's 25 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour winds, you know, 25 knot winds and drizzling and 60 degrees. So or I guess it was 65, 67. Yeah. That's, it wasn't super comfortable. That's not comfortable. That's not a good beach day. All right, guys. Well, that is it for West End. Uh, yeah, we feel like we've shortchanged it a little. We didn't give it a fair shake. Uh, truthfully, we probably could have, should have stayed here longer. Uh, we checked in here, and then a cold front blew through. And when that happened... All we got was uh, a cloudy day and some rain. So that was the predominance of our our day here. We were going to go to the beach. There's a really nice beach really close to here. Um, but we didn't because it was, uh, you know, 20 knot winds, drizzly. Uh, would not have been a great day. We were hoping to see a little bit more, but the winds are right to head to the berries. So we are leaving for the berries right now. It's like 9.30 in the morning. 
and and now is the time uh it's a shame this anchorage is absolutely flawless if you come to the west end don't believe the reviews uh or don't believe the first review on navionics read the reviews okay anchors up we are on our way to the berries it's about 10 30 in the morning misha's at the helm um waves are a little high right now uh they're supposed to slowly calm down throughout the day but uh this is when the wind is blowing so you know this is when we go We're doing about 6.1 knots, which is nice, uh, and about 13 knots of wind. Got that lean going on, you can see. Sea state's really good right now, but that's because the wind is coming from the direction of land, so we don't. There's no fetch, and we don't get any waves. Uh, once we pass the point at Freeport, uh, we will slowly gain more fetch and gain more wave but uh man if we can maintain five or six knots we will get there ahead of schedule that'd be nice misha's crushing it at the helm yeah we're cruising right along we have great conditions great sailing conditions today it was good it was so far anyway <laughs> until we get offshore i guess we'll see Right, we're hugging the coastline for the first couple of hours uh, headed south. So we're headed out of West End and we've got pretty good winds. We're cruising along right about five knots. And we were just talking about how um, we're looking, looking off to the port side and seeing all these beautiful beaches and talking about how the weather plays such a huge factor in um, cruising, in, a, in the cruising lifestyle, because you have to go when the winds are right, and it doesn't matter if you've seen and done everything that you wanted to see and do, sometimes um, you just have to be ready to go. So there's a lot here that we would have liked to have seen, and um, we're not able because the weather right now is, is right to go. Yeah, we would have liked to have stayed and seen West End, and uh, maybe even Freeport a little bit. Um, but this is our window for like the next week. So while we think there's a good one or two days worth of stuff to do here, there is not a week's worth of stuff. And we don't want to be here for a week. So um, we're using this opportunity to get to the berries. Once we get down there, uh, we'll probably stay there for potentially a week. Um, you know, it's a little nicer, we hope. Uh, it's a little warmer, we hope. But uh, we're just trying to, to get down the Bahamas in a reasonable time frame. We're not trying to rush it, but we're also you know, picking our battles here. And we're not going to sit at West End for a full week waiting on the next weather window. Also... We had some friends in the Bahamas that we wanted to meet up with. And so we were, uh, again, self-imposed, kind of not rushing, but we wanted to catch up with them. It was going to be more fun to enjoy the Bahamas with people. Um, ultimately, that did not work out. But again, uh, uh, you know, we, we left West End uh, ahead of schedule simply because the, the, everything aligned right uh, to be gone. We'll have to go back. ships anchored out here and the um, crane operator 
lifted his boom and swung it out over the water. And then as we passed by, he put the boom back in place. I think he was waving at us. And if that is like just standard protocol and he was just doing something normal, don't tell me because I like to think he was waving at us. <laughs> it's hard to describe how absolutely massive these ships are. And it's pretty humbling for us in our little 45 foot sailboat cruising along next to them and looking up at their at their decks. We can't even see their decks are too too far up. But they're just incredibly huge. Did you want to say something? Because I I was just wondering why you were looking at their decks. <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> hey, I like a nice shiny deck. <laughs> there were some rusty decks in there. They need shots. <laughs> well, you know, every every deck needs a little TLC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's 3 p.m. and my shift is over. Um, we're just now starting to get offshore from uh, Freeport. You see that's Freeport. Uh, went by all the big ships and everything. The winds have been weird. It's uh, they'll go between eight and 18, uh, and not rapidly. Right, they'll blow. Uh, slowly up to 18 and then come back down to like 8. Uh, we're now in waves. <laughs> uh, now that we're getting offshore and we're not behind the island anymore, we are actually getting into uh, some, some slightly heavier seas, which we expected. That's not a surprise. So, how you doing? Good. I'm trying to okay so we're we're right now we're holding like a, a 130 heading um which has taken us a little east of our intended track uh, on purpose um the winds are forecast to slowly shift from northeast to east by uh, around midnight tonight um Almost all the models were in agreement on that, so we have a high confidence in that forecast. And once they hit east, it'll be hard to hold uh, the, the 150 track that we need to hold. So uh, we are just slowly tracking east of, uh, we were slowly moving east of our track uh, while the winds are out of the northeast. Uh, and then as they curve around, we'll just curve around with them and be back on course. So, I just finished up my shift. It is now six o'clock, and Kate has taken over. And we're cruising right along. I think we were averaging, bless you. Averaging over, uh, well, over four knots. Um, we were doing closer to you know, five and a half, six knots in the beginning, but we're, we've slowed down just a little bit. But we're still over four knots, and we are on, um, let's see, I was keeping it on a 120, 130, 135 heading. 130, 135. And um, the waves are still about uh, four feet, which they were forecast to be today. But um, but they seem to be getting a little bit lighter too. They're, they're a little bit more in, infrequent, it seems like. Um, the sail has been really nice so far. We were just talking about how we have graduated to the next level. 
also a lot of you um, when we, back when we were complaining about 20 knots blowing uh, at the anchorage in St. Augustine and some of you said that you sail in 20 knots and we thought well that's just crazy <laughs> but now we are begging for 20 knots so we can get this party started uh, we're loving it we've, we've got 16 about 16 right now we're, we're averaging between it's kind of sporadic it's um, between 10 and 18 really but if we could hold it at 18 or 20 knots we'd we would be just ecstatic about that um but it's going really well so far we're looking at arriving after daybreak uh, probably get into shallow water around 7 a.m. or so. Okay, so I just came off of shift. It's 9 o'clock. Uh, Misha is no longer allowed to talk about the wind. In the, her last update, she said, Oh, we were wishing for 20 knot winds. It's only like 14 or 15. No. As soon as she said that, we were getting 20 knot winds, 20, 21. Uh, yeah, that's rough. I mean, it's, it's doable, but you're white knuckling the wheel. Um, we were doing six knots. It, yeah, interestingly, it's, she was trying to take the dogs out right when the winds came back up. So she was on the bow for 21 knots. Uh, I don't like that, but Right now, what we're doing is when the winds start hitting 18 or 19 knots, we just kind of point farther into the wind to slow us down. Uh, we need to be tracking that direction anyway. And then when the winds start to die off down to like 12 or 13, we we track farther uh, broadside to the wind, which is not the direction we want to go, but it, it keeps our speed up. So uh, we'll get there. We're making good time, but uh, it has not been the most comfortable cruise. <laughs> I just came off shift and it is midnight. And um, the swell has really picked up and we're going kind of broadside into it. So it's made for a pretty uncomfortable sail. Um, I'm super tired. Um, I don't know what else to say. Cade just took shift, but he did not really get any restful sleep while he was on his break. So hopefully he can hang in there for the next three hours. But uh, the wind has died down somewhat and we we'll just keep going on. I'm going to lay down and try to get some rest. I'm not feeling all that great. So I just woke Misha up for her shift uh, and I've come up with a new joke that I think nobody, no couple in sailing history has ever made. So let's do it together. Hey, Misha. Land, ho! <laughs> I love that slide because I'm so happy to see land right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's letting it slide because she's so happy to see land. I mean, I just made that up. Nobody's ever thought of that before. I'm so surprised. There's nothing like two and a half hours of sleep and then someone shoving the camera in the face. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right guys, we'll talk to you later. All right, well I just came off shift. Uh, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, dogs have been out. We're in about 17 feet of water. Oh, 16 now. Uh, we're still about well, we're seven miles from our anchorage, but we're in the berries, the, the, the banks there, whatever. Um, yeah, we're, we're kind of tacking back and forth right now. We've got the motor on, but of course, uh, because the motor's got some issues, 
we were able to do like one and a half knots with it, uh, which into a direct, you know, 12 knot headwind ends up being like 0.5 knots. So uh, we're tacking back and forth, which is good. We're making about two knots, two and a half knots worth of progress. Um, Misha's gonna hold this 090 for another hour and then we'll switch over to like a 030 uh, so that we kind of zigzag back into it. The water is gorgeous and it's very flat right now and a comfortable ride. Um, and I don't remember what I was. Yeah, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> it's just beautiful water. I had, a, I had a train of thought going and... I ruined it by yeah, turning yeah. away. Well, <laughs> yeah. I turned the microphone away, I realized, oh That's no. okay, that's all right. I have a, a memory like a goldfish. If I have a train, of, if I have a thought queued up, I need to spit it out, otherwise it's gone. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I won't stop you from spitting in the future. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, you see what I'm up against here, people? <laughs> she knows what she's up against. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you set me up for that one. I can't say anything. <laughs> That is some very blue water. Well, that's it for this one. Uh, we're in the berries. Yay! Yeah. So our second island in the chain of Bahamian islands. Chain, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, in two weeks, no sailing. All beaches, all drug lord houses, all resorts. It should be a good time. Uh, if you liked this video, hit the like button, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell. It's free to you and it really helps us out. Uh, if you're interested in uh, contributing in a more direct way, go to our website for loveofwind.com or visit us on Patreon at patreon.com slash forloveofwind. And I think we will see you in two weeks. Bye, guys. Bye. All right, you ready for some drinks and some laying out? I'm ready. Okay, uh, we will see you guys in a little while. We're gonna lay out uh, not appropriate for YouTube. <laughs>